So mga kababayan na itong uh, video na pakita ko sa inyo ay naging uh, usap-usapin ngayon sa social media itong ginawang uh, interview ng tatlong tumatakbong presidente si Gonzales, si Montemayor, Ona at itong si uh, Bongbong Marcos. Pero sa part ng video na ito, ang ipapakita ko muna sa inyo itong interview ni Bongbong Marcos sa kina Carlos, kina Sasot ang dalawang ano eh, tatlong ano pala, tatlong uh, question ang tinanong sa kanya dito. Una yung tanong ay patungkol sa energy, like uh, energy, ibig sabihin like sa mga kuryente. Pangalawa ay patungkol sa agriculture at makikita mo dito mga kababayan. Kayong mga magsasaka, kung mapanood nyo ito ay uh, medyo matutuwa kayo dito mga kababayan dahil yung plano ni Bongbong Marcos ay hindi biro. Talagang napakalaking uh, pag-aasa sa ating bansa. At saka patungkol, ang pangatlo ay itong LGBT. Yun ang ipo, may, mayroon din siyang sinabi dito kung ano bang pananaw niya sa LGBT. Medyo wala naman siyang gagawing batas dyan pero mayroon siyang panawagan. Ang pinaka-punto ko dito, yung sa agriculture mga kababayan, napakaganda kung ito ya ma, ma ano niya magawa niya ma. so panoorin nito mga kababayan at kayo nang kumusta dito mag subscribe na rin sa ating channel now we will resume the questions with the, from the panels mga nang gabi po sino to good evening Ronex ang katanungan ko po ay tungkol sa power oh, no. alam niyo po yung ipira inati yung bansa natin ah mm -hmm. uh, electric power Uh, reforms Industry Act. Yeah. Ipira. Oh, Ipira. po, ganito. Uh, recently, ang Malacanang po ay naglabas. Pinarama ng Pangulo, Executive Order 164, adding nuclear power to the energy mix. Mm -hmm. And among others, to study the viability kung pwede pa natin i-operate yung BNPP at ang iba pang mga uh, facilities para sa paggamit ng nuclear energy. Pwede mo malaman kung ano yung Uh, isip nyo po tungkol dito kasi po mangyayari sa uh, sa sunod na termino ang 18 milestones ito po yung unang hakbang lamang marami talagang uh, pinag-uusapan energy is hard uh, ito uh, uh, aminin ko sa inyo talagang pinag-aaralan ko napakahirap ayusin uh, dahil nga yung uh, ating sistema uh, the IPIRA law marami talaga nakakontain dyan na uh, kailangan pag-aralan ulit uh, pop Because ang reklamo sa buong bansa, both na consumers lamang at saka yung mga negosyante, kasi lagi natin napapag-usapan mga foreign investors na nagre-reklamo sa power, pati local investors. Kaya ang, ang, ang investment sa Pilipinas is not capital intensive. Uh, ang mga investment sa Pilipinas, short term lang, kung minsan hot money lang ang pumapasok, pasok labas lang yan. It doesn't build anything. So, that is, it, it, is, a, it is a major problem. At uh, kung titignan natin ang mga projection uh, sa pangyayari, ngayon, uh, just to, to, as a perfect example, uh, yun, na, narinig na siguro naman ng lahat, na sinasabi na baka sa eleksyon magkakaroon ng brown out. Uh, kaya dahil magig, nasa gitna na tayo ng summer, ng tag-araw. Kaya yan ang uh, maliwanag na maliwanag, kulang na talaga ang power supply doon sa ating, doon sa ating uh, requirements. At saka, yung idadagdag pa dapat natin para makapag-industrialize tayo ng mabuti. Kaya uh, it's something that has to be attended to. In other words, uh, kailangan natin lahat. Kailangan natin lahat ng makuha natin na power sources uh, para eh, mabigyan tayo ng mas mura at uh, mas malawak at uh, mas reliable na power supply. Ngayon, maaari nating i-expand yung ating hydro, expand natin yung ating geothermal. Uh, but there's a, there's a very simple idea when it comes to the energy sector. It's something called the base load. The base load is the is the base is the load that never goes away. Just the, the the demand that never goes away. Kahit gabi, kahit araw, ito na yung mga planta na nagpapatakbo. So that base load has to be satisfied. Kaya kung hindi umiihip ang hangin, paano yung wind power? Kung uh, gabi, paano yung uh, solar power? Kailangan pa rin nung traditional. Ngayon, doon tayo mamimili. Although we cannot, we, we, it's not traditional for the Philippines, nuclear power is already considered a traditional power source. So it has to be looked into. 
uh, yung sa BNPP nag-offer na because if you uh, ang uh, ang Korea has I believe five sister plants to the Westinghouse plant in BNPP and they have offered uh, I always say it's ironic that the names of their plants are Core 1, Core 2, Core 3, Core 4, Core 5. Pero tayo hindi tayo nagkaroon kahit isa. But they have offered to come uh, with their technical people and they have offered to come to, to, to give us an idea. Pwede pa ba ito? Uh, because kahit pa paano, it was uh, the BNPP, the Patan Nuclear Power Plant was supposed to go online with 650 megawatts in 1986. Uh, that's, uh, that's, a long that's a long time ago. Marami ng bagong technologies, marami ng bagong requirements. So we'll see. We have to, I think, I think we should be open to our Korean friends to come and to tell us if this is still viable or you have to do something else. Uh, when it comes to uh, nuclear, nuclear power as, as an idea, well, let's just follow the science. Because dito, dito naging political eh, sa Pilipinas. I, I'm, it's also political in other places. But in, in our particular case, the reason we have no power plant, uh, nuclear power plant at all is pure politics. Uh, did not really follow the science. Uh, so that's, we have to look into it. Because, uh, you know, there are, there are con the, even after Fukushima, when everybody was saying nuclear power is going to, we have to rethink, we, we have to, kailangan natin pag-aralan ulit dyan, mukhang delikado. Walang nagbago ng kanilang pagplano na pagpatayo ng nuclear power plant, kahit saan. America, tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Sa France, the majority of their power is already created by nuclear power. Uh, so, in the other countries, ganun din. Um, so, I still, I, I still think that it's something we should examine. There are many new technologies. One of, one of the ones that uh, we keep reading about are the modular nuclear power plant. They start with a small one. Gusto mong palakihin, bumili ka ulit ng module, ikakabit mo, palakihin mo ng palakihin hanggat gusto mo. Siguro naman kailang, kaya, kaya natin patakboy ng nuclear power plant. Wala naman, there's no reason na bakit hindi kaya ng Pilipino na magpatakbo ng nuclear power plant. So, uh, it's something that should be part of the mix. Kasama dyan is COP26 where we decided to cut down on coal-fired power generation. And what happened, nagtaasan ng presyo kasi walang kapalit sa renewable. Ibig sabihin, yung mix ng renewable at saka traditional, kailangan talaga natin, eh, we have to decide once and for all, what is the mix that is, that is good for, that's good for the Philippines. I think it's not going to be a static point. I think as years go on uh, and we develop renewables, uh, we develop other sources of power, that mix is going to slowly shift towards renewables, hopefully, because that's what we want because of uh, climate change. But nonetheless, that mix is still something that's up in the air that we haven't really determined what is proper and appropriate for the Philippine, uh, for the Philippine setting. But the, to make a short answer to your question, is that lahat kailangan natin. Kailangan natin palakihin ang hydroelectric, kailangan natin palakihin yung geothermal, kailangan natin uh, pa paramihan ng mga power plant, kailangan natin magtingin, tumingin sa mga bagong technologies, mga wind farm, solar, uh, kailangan natin tingnan ng nuclear. Uh, at kung kailangan talaga, di balikan natin oil fired. But oil fired has become less and less attractive because of what's happening it's in the, the volatility of oil prices, especially in the last two, three years. Uh, then with this new development in Ukraine, eh, talagang mag kailangan pag-isip-isipan natin ng mabuti. Kasi baka maipit tayo, pag tumas na naman yan, hindi natin maipatakbo yung planta natin, balik na naman tayo sa dati, nasa brownout na naman tayo. Now we have lots of good, we have lots of coal here in the Philippines. The Chinese claim to have uh, uh, good enough technology. I've actually visited one of their coal-fired plants that na malinis na, that they're able to extract the carbon and they're able to to dispose of the carbon properly. So the, all of these things we need to look into. Lahat yan kailangan natin. Well, after uh, the generating companies, meron po tayong Transco. Mm -hmm. Marami reklamo sa Transco. <laughs> Senador, mm -hmm. open ba kayo sa idea na katulad ng tubig, 
may West Sector Operator, may East Sector Operator, uh, cha-chop-chop natin ang plans ko? I don't think so. Uh, may economies of scale yan eh. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it, ang, ang, ang business model ng, uh, ng uh, uh, high tension na delivery uh, na ginagamit ng Transco is the same as a, as a tollway. Uh, you maintain the tollway, you collect toll, and that's how you pay for what you build. Uh, that's the same thing that we, that, that, that uh, Transco should be doing. Uh, yun lamang, siguro, da hindi, hindi sapat. Sa amin lang, marami kaming pangangailangan dyan sa Transco. We were hoping to build a, uh, a high-tension uh, cable from Ilocos Norte to, take, to bring, to directly export the power we, were, we are producing by, via windmills directly to Manila because that's, that's where the demand is. Uh, and it's uh, more profitable for us. But um, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nangyayari. And I, I'm not sure. I'm not privy to the to to the the, the board meetings and the discussions uh, going on in Transco. Uh, so I do not know quite why walapayan. But uh, yes, it is. It should be. It really should be a simple operation. Nakai, madali lang naman patakbuhin dapat yan. Kaya uh, pag-aralan natin kung bakit nagkakaganon. We, we, you mentioned Ipira. We have to look back at Ipira. I think Ipira might already have been, have already, at least certain provisions in Ipira um, are already obsolete. Uh, as a matter of fact. Sir? Senator? Yes, yes. I hope you don't mind. I'd like to switch topics a little bit because we have a short period to ask so many, oh, about so many okay. issues. All right, all right. I'd like to ask about agriculture because you've mentioned that in the last time you were, you were here. One of the biggest problems that the sector is facing is the aging of farmers. Yes. One study I've read yes. said that their average age is between 57 and 59. And the worst thing is their children don't want to go into agriculture. And this observation is supported by declining, declining enrollment in agricultural programs of SUCs across the nation. I know. And last, the Secretary of Agriculture last year said that we may be facing a critical shortage of farmers in as little as 12 years, and he said this last year. So maybe you'd like to share with us what your plans are regarding this issue. Well, regarding the age of, of, of uh, farmers getting older, not only are they discouraged to come in, their parents who are farmers, they say, wag na kayong pumasok dito, napakahirap ng buhay dito. Mag-aral mag kayo, pumunta kayo sa Manila, pumunta kayo sa city, dyan kayo magpagaling para hindi nyo na kailangan daanan itong dinadaanan namin. That's, that's, that's the state of the agriculture in the Philippines today. Uh, the, as, a general, as a general rule, as a general um, concept, I think uh, we have to really shift already from what is essentially still mom and pop operation and talk about agribusiness and talk about the industry of agriculture. Uh, and there are, many, there are many things that we need to do to achieve that, to get to that point. See, when, when, let's go back to the issue of the age of, the, of our farmers and the young people who are not going into, into agriculture. Uh, if it is an ag agribusiness, it, if it is not the traditional farming method that we are always going through, that we have been doing for the last millennia, uh, but move into something that is more high-tech, then that will necessarily ask, need for uh, the, the entry into more technically-minded uh, agribusiness practitioners. And that will bring the age younger uh, immediately. Uh, I, I, I know already for, uh, for myself, young people, young people in their 30s who have discovered some new technology or have, have, have come across a new thing. Bagay sa atin to, ah. Gawin natin. And they do. And they, 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 they have, they have, they have uh, brought all kinds of new techniques to farming. But it's not yet extensive because there are no encouragements coming from government in terms of tax breaks, in terms of, I don't, I don't really believe in subsidies in that regard. But uh, we can, I still think that we, and, uh, we can uh, improve the attractiveness of the agricultural sector to younger people if we use the most modern, most interesting technology. 
And the kids say they can geek it out, right? They'll just, they'll just pag-aralan nila na mabuti. They, 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 it's, I, that's a very interesting, it will become a very interesting line of is work. There, is there an important role for government to play? Because if you look at the public spending on agriculture in the Philippines, it's only about 1.7% of the national budget. Far below what is being spent in other ASEAN countries. Yes. It, 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 it's been that, and it has been that way for a long time. Uh, I think uh, we, we haven't really, we have really, we have really neglected uh, agriculture um, because we had a system set up where the entire value chain was uh, attended to by government. Uh, and of course, the, the, the private sector practitioners you know, come, come, come into the picture during the trading and in the, in the market. Uh, but that was, that was uh, dismantled in 1986 and has not been a replacement for it. So we have to do it again. And if we look at the countries that we are competing with in terms of rice production, for example, uh, it is there Thailand and Vietnam, the obvious ones. Uh, their cost of production is lower. The labor, uh, the, the labor uh, segment of their production cost is one half of ours. And that's due to mechanization. We have not mechanized at all. The, it, it, it is, it's going to take, it's not a simple thing because we have to organize now large, to be able to mechanize properly, to use the big machines, the big tractors, the big harvesters. Uh, yung nakikita natin sa, sa ibang bansa, na ginagamit na kalaki-laki, na ang bilis-bilis, siguro sa isang araw, ilang hektarya na nakocover nila. Pero ang average, uh, ang average na holding, land holding dito sa Pilipinas is less than one hectare. So hindi mo magamit, hindi mo magamit yung mga ganong klaseng makina. So the way to do it, or the way we did it in Ilocos, was we organized the cooperatives. And in that way, we were able to take full advantage of economies of scale. And I think that's what we need to do here in the Philippines now. But uh, there are other things that need to be done as well. We have, uh, we, we, I think the, the, the fact that we are importing galunggong has, has been, has been uh, made very, very public. It's been very, very clear that it is quite a surprise uh, for that to, 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 but for us to get into that situation. But uh, again, it really comes from a neglect and the agricultural sector. So what we, the, the things we have to do, we have to do the research and development for the new varieties, uh, for the new, yung kaming nag-aalaga ng hayop, paano yung, paano yung gagawin yung pag, uh, pagkalat ng mga, nung, uh, mga inahin. Again, you know, the, the, these are different schemes that we have to put together in our fisheries. There is a very, very good potential for us. Kung ayusin lang natin ang ating kinukuhanan ng isda, number one, bigyan natin yung mga manging isda na mas malaking bangka. Maliliit lang yung bangka nila eh. And they have to go out already 12 kilometers kasi overfish na dito sa loob. Um, and then, of course, patrol so that maraming nagpo-poat sa atin. So, uh, we have to have the new, all the best techniques and technologies for our farmers and for our fishermen. Is your folk. So that, that, that's just, just the beginning of it. And then the support. Now one of the biggest problems that the agricultural industry is facing right now in terms of crops is urea is 2,500 pesos now. And we know of many areas where farmers just didn't plant. And that kills our production. Taas na naman ang importation natin. Uh, because importeke, kung minsan, kung kulang talaga, kulang talaga. Kung pabayaan mo yan, tataas naman ang presyo, hindi na kaya ng tao. Kaya talagang kailangan ayusin yung, yung, yung agrikultura. So you have to support, the government has to support that. Um, this question of urea, for example, siguro ang gobyerno lang bibili in bulk, uh, hundreds of tons of urea, and then isama na yan sa production loan. Bago planting season, magbibigay ka ng production loan sa farmer. Uh, yung iba, pera. Yung iba, uh, uh, seedlings. Yung iba, uh, abono. Uh, the, the fertilizer, at saka yung pesticide. And then, you could support them with new techniques, the, the techno demos, teach them what are the new plants, what are the new techniques, how you can save water, how you can uh, save on the other inputs, etc., etc. 
and then the processing you know it is not should not really be allowed anymore dapat in, uh, in the year 2022 dapat wala na kitayong nakikitang palay na tinutuyo sa highway dahil dapat meron na tayong binigay yan si Rolex Rolex knows this well from uh, because mga sa local talagang yun ang ano yun ang problema eh so tapos yung mga milling dapat talaga meron tayong milling na small scale large scale depending on what everyone so the, the value stays with the farmer hindi pumupunta sa trader na may malaking milling uh, na planta i mean there's nothing wrong with the traders they they have a part to play but let's keep as much of the value added and give it back to the farmer. And then, if we are able to do that, gumanda ang ating production, bumurang, bumurang ating production cost, we can directly sell it. And the Kadiwa is the, 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 the example that we always use. Uh, we can sell it to the public at a lower price, assuming the government will not make a profit because the government should not make a profit. So they should be able to, 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 to sell these uh, a basic um, agricultural products for less. Mr. Marcus, yes, um, yes. we all know that your um, campaign's theme is uh, unity. Mm -hmm. And recently, you made a statement on an issue that, you know, would test um, your call for unity because this issue is really polarizing mm -hmm. in our country. And I'm referring to your statement on LGBTQ rights. And so my question is, you know, there are a lot of interests that had to be balanced here, especially that even though that we are a secular country, our people, you know, around 80% of our people have really, really strong religious beliefs. And these two things, you know, are always contrary to each other. So my question is, how will you balance the legitimate aim of protecting the rights and welfare of LGBTQ people while at the same time um, respecting the legitimate um, interests of religious groups that they can freely pursue their belief on this matter? I don't think LGBTQ issues are polarizing in the Philippines. Honestly. Um, I think we are much more open-minded about it considering the fact that we are in fact a very Roman Catholic country. But then you must, uh, and so that, that I don't think it's polarizing at all. Um, I think Filipinos are, I don't know how to put it, but we're much cooler than most other places when it comes to these things. Um, so, and I think the, when I talk to L, the uh, members of the commu that community, Wala namang hinihingi na special treatment ang mga LGBTQ. Wag lang do not discriminate against us. Yun lang naman yun eh. Uh, we don't want a special program for you, for, for, for ourselves. We have to want to, you know, do something. Just don't, just pat, patas lang. Patas lang, pare-pareho lang. Na kahit LGBTQ kami, kahit matanda kami, kahit uh, uh, tiga, we come from the wrong place, I don't know, whatever. Now, all this kind, all forms of discrimination are some things that we have to guard against because that's corrosive. That just gets in the way. It doesn't, it doesn't, help, uh, it doesn't help anything. So that, I think, is the approach to LGBTQ issues, is just fight discrimination every step of the way. Uh, there, there's a pool of talent in every sector of our society that we need to take advantage of. And so we, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, exclude any part and, and say, hindi pwede yan, hindi na ayaw namin sa ganyan. And let me get to the point. I mean, LGBTQ, Roman Catholic, you will say that it is a, it's a What did the Pope say? When he was, uh, he was asked about same-sex marriage, same-sex union, let me, uh, let me correct myself, same-sex union. And I think the Pope uh, said it perfectly, who am I to judge? And that's the attitude that we all of us should have. And with that, I think it will, will be, we'll go down the correct place. We will go down the right path. Yeah, um, I think Sorry, this will be... Professor Carlos. I know that you warned me about senior citizens losing their train of thought, but I have been instructed to go on a commercial break. 
So yan mga kababayan, no? kayo nang humusga sa mga sinasabi ni Bumbum Marcos. Sa palagay mo, eh, talagang bang napahanga ka dito sa interview ni Bumbum Marcos at sa mga sagot niya. Ito ay part 1 pa lamang. Mayroon pang part 2, part 3 ito sa ginawang interview niya sa mga bigating mga professor din no? at uh, sa mga tanong at sagot niya. Simpleng tanong pero yung sagot niya ay talaga eh talagang napakalaman mga kababayan yung ginawang uh, sagot ni Bongbong Marcos. So maraming salamat.